Good morning. Good morning, Bethel people. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. We are still anticipating and then the waiting for the coming of the one who comes to witness our struggles as human beings. We are very grateful today. But before we start, I have a few announcements for you. Members and friends of Bethel, we would like to invite you to work on yourself saying Merry Christmas. And then once you do that, you email it to the church. So the church um, email is in, in the bulletin. So you email it to us by Friday, December 18th. So I will put the video together and then um, we will launch it on, on our YouTube and also Facebook page. On December 18, which is Tuesday, we have the Women Bible Study. It is online, of course, Zoom. So the information also is in, in the bulletin. So the good news is we will have virtual communion um, for the whole month. So we started uh, to the 6th, 13th, 20th, and 24th. So all the information we give you how to get ready is also in the bulletin. So, so before we start, let's take a deep breath to welcome the Holy Spirit within us. While we cannot be together in person, but we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayer from wherever we are. Welcome the spirit, the spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life, the life when it takes away from one affect all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. For the light, lighting of the Advent wreath, so we are going to sing the song, Light One Candle to Watch the Messiah on page six in your, six in your bulletin. So we will sing verse two. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The opening hymn is on page 7 in the bulletin, Blessed be the God of Israel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only, only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made <coughs> low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God, our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. 
Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm for today is Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune, O of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second lesson is from Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens in a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Here ends the second lesson. We will continue with our prayer requests for today. Lord of all in need, Search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Ed, Shirley, Crystal, Kristen, Pat, Connor and family, Pamela, 
Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Xavier and finally Tyler. We pray for hope, comfort, help and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember those who are most vulnerable to the disease, as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We thank you for helping and protecting those who have fought the wildfires in our area. And we ask for your care for those who are recovering from the destruction. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty. And we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. We pray for the work of the Sierra Pacific Synod of the ELCA in bringing the light of Christ's grace and salvation to our world. We pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon hymn is on page 11 in your bulletin. On Jordan's banks, the Baptist. 
cry. As I turned over in my bed that morning, I heard that voice again coming from the corner of my street shouting out to people, repent your time, repent you sinners who are do doing X, Y, and Z. Let me try again, can I? Gosh, okay. As I turned over in my bed that morning, I heard that voice again coming from the corner of my street shouting out to people. Repent, you sinners who are doing X, Y, and Z. You better to. Otherwise, you are going to hell. So I have to tell you, it always it irritates me that I have to wake up to that sentence. It keeps me awake for the rest of the morning. So 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. has become the least favorite time of my life. The thought in my head always is, how can they be successful in, in getting people to repent if they keep disturbing people's sleep like that every morning? Does it really work? I've got to tell you, it doesn't work for me. It sounds more like religious bullying than anything else. I know Jesus is not about that. So I struggle with it a lot. This text for this second Sunday in Advent introduces us not only to the figure of John the Baptist, but also to the Gospel of Mark, from which a majority of Gospel texts will be selected in the coming year. Mark wants to tell us about the beginning of a new era, a time and place in which God has entered human history in an unprecedented way. 
and I can't imagine that it was religious bullying that brought all the Judea and Jerusalem to be baptized by John. I mean, fear and threat can create change in behavior. No question about it, but it doesn't really change your thinking. Threats don't change your heart. For that kind of change, change in thinking and change of heart, it takes truth and promise. Namely, through truth and promise that is external to us and that comes only from God, reaching into the graves that we dig for ourselves and bringing out new life. Because if repentance comes from something other than an external word of truth, about who you are and who God is, it's not repentance, it's self-improvement. And I'm pretty sure what happened that day by the banks of the Jordan River was more than just a massive wave of self-improvement. So, if John came preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, then maybe it wasn't so much so that sinners would confess and stop being bad. Maybe it was so that all would hear the truth about this God who comes near to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Not so that we might be good, but so that we might be new. John says to them, prepare the way of the Lord. To echo Isaiah chapter 40, 40th, verses 1 through 11, which serves as the first lesson for today. That passage announces God's intention to visit God's people. So, beloved, get ready for something new, because there is one who is coming who will change everything. And the way in which John the Baptist prepares the people for the gospel is by making room for it to washing away their old ideas and expectations so that nothing gets in the way of the Lord, Lord's coming. The untruth and sin and shame and all competing identities float away in the Jordan because the real thing was finally here. Because in baptism, God forgives us rescues us, and gives us new life. Because in Jesus, God is doing a new thing, not to make us good, but to make us new. See, I believe it was the truth and promise of this gospel and not religious bullying that compelled repentance and no lie from the people of Judea. And of course, from me too. For this reason, I love that Mark's gospel opens with the beginning of the good news. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If it had been titled, The Beginning of the Good Short Story of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then it would not be news. What makes it news is that it is something new that is external to us that we have to be told. It is news because it is not anything we could or would ever come up with ourselves. Because any truth that I generate from within from within me simply doesn't have the power to save me. So, beloved, with the good news of Jesus Christ, God has 
already entered the struggle, whether it is unemployment, hunger, sickness, caused by the, the pandemic. The coming of Christ is the gospel, good news from the front, as it were. The words of Isaiah help us to perceive the voice that comments that we prepare the way in the desert, in the wilderness. But the way is not ours. The way is the Lord's. And that's the good news for the struggle. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let, it, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat, and drink. Sibling in Christ, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and, and thirst. Guide by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 12 in your bulletin. I came upon the midnight clear. Go in peace, be safe, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.